to Everyday Enlightenment. I'm your host, Patty Teal. I'm here today with Kat Kirby, and Kat just finished a beautiful retreat at Sedona Mago Retreat. And it's bringing creativity to um, people who just want to use that creativity and take it wherever it will help them. Kat is a creativity coach, retired board certified and registered art therapist, soul collage trainer, artist and creative workshop and retreat leader, working with individuals, groups and families to facilitate personal expression, healing and growth. I had so much fun watching a little bit of her class, as I said, in the retreat that she recently completed at Sedona Mago Retreat. Welcome, Kat. Thank you, Patty. It's great to see you again. <laughs> oh, it was so such a pleasure for me to see all the fun that you were having. It would have been like being a kid again to go into that kind of a setting and have such freedom to create beautiful things. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So what first uh, brought about the idea to have these creativity retreats for adults? So I, um, I've been doing little workshops in my studio here in Prescott, Arizona, and it occurred to me that everyone often said that they didn't have enough time to finish. So then I started doing weekend workshops uh, and came upon that same concept. So um, about 10 years ago, I started doing week-long retreats at Ghost Ranch, which is up in northern New Mexico, where George O'Keefe used to paint. I started doing soul collage workshops there for a week. And then from there, I've now done uh, week-long retreats in the south of France and in Portugal and the Caribbean. And then it occurred to me, why not just stay home, uh, stay local? I mean, Sedona is such a beautiful place. And I knew when I found Sedona Mago Retreat that that would be my home base for these week-long creativity retreats. Oh, everybody looked like they were having such a great time. What are some of the benefits that people get out of coming to a creativity retreat, your creativity retreat specifically? I try to encourage people to tap into their inner child. Um, unfortunately, I was an art teacher for a while, and I saw how the curriculum within uh, art uh, the curriculum for art education was pretty strict. In my opinion, if a child showed up and did their best, they got an A. Well, that didn't gel with the administration. So uh, I went back to school and became an art therapist, an expressive art therapist, where we use art and music and dance and poetry to help bring out that creative energy that got stifled for people as a child for the most part in art education classes, which is such a shame. So um, one of the things we do right at first is I have everyone pick an image of a chair. I have a whole file full of chairs and I invite them to seat their inner critic in the chair and put it against the wall. And if they need to be reminded that they're a horrible person or they can't do something, they can go visit their critic. Otherwise, we say there's really no need for that and to just let yourself express whatever your style is and to learn what your own creative voice is, which is different for everybody. Wow, that is so important, isn't it? And, and so many of our feelings that we're not good at something go back to childhood, as you said. You know, I know uh, people youngsters often love to sing but i run into so many people who are afraid to voice their voice because they think they had brothers or sisters or parents say stop that it's annoying don't do that and i think it's the same with art and people just feel they're no good and they give up trying when they have they might have this extraordinary talent and maybe the talent doesn't even matter just the fact that it's a way for them to express themselves Absolutely. I mean, I tell people I can't draw. You know, I'm not a, a realistic uh, artist. I'm an expressive artist. My stuff looks like I'm still in kindergarten, but I love it. And I, mm -hmm. I hope to encourage other people to tap into that part of themselves that knows how to use paint and maybe not to paint a beautiful landscape with trees and buildings and animals, but, you know, maybe to paint something that looks like, you know, this, which is just a painted rock which is what we did in our, in our workshop. And it's just, 
easy because it's paint and it's Sharpies and markers and it doesn't have to look like anything except what you want it to. That's beautiful, that, that rock. That's so cool. Now, I know one of the other things that you mentioned, and when I introduced you that you mentioned briefly, was the soul collage. And I got to see a little of some of those soul collages that some of your students were doing, and they were just amazing. But can you explain to our, our listeners or watchers, you know, how whoever is tuning in, what that is? Sure. Soul collage is a is a process of building your own deck of almost like your own tarot deck of cards. So each card refers to one energy that is unique in yourself. So for instance, you would make a card for the part of you that loves to read books or that that loves cats or the part of you that is impatient. And each part, no matter whether you like it or not, gets a card, it gets a little piece of art. They're about five by eight inches and they have magazine pictures or calendar images and we cut and tear them until they look the way we want them to and some of the cards are mystery cards which means we're not really sure what part of us they refer to but we were drawn to the images I think everyone can relate to the idea of when you flip through a magazine you know some images just catch your eye and soul collage was started um, gosh about maybe 15 years ago or so, by a woman named Sina Frost, who combined her love of uh, spirituality and creativity along with her understanding of psychology. And so we read our own cards. We don't have somebody else do a reading for us. We made the cards and we know what the wisdom is that we instilled in them. And so we ask a question about something that's going on in our lives right now that we would benefit from some guidance about. And then we do either a three or a four card spread or some people just pick one card out of their deck each morning and just say, well, that's what I need to think about today. And that's there's, beautiful. There's no limit, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no limit to the number of cards. The deck is ever expanding. Mine has about 300 cards in it now. My and, goodness. And there's always more aspects or right. new, challenge, new challenges and something else will come up that you'll need another card for, I'm sure. That's yeah. amazing. Right need to make a card for my my retreat leader self <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely yeah being nurtured yeah yes now the people who are drawn to your retreats are they professional artists just everyday people both who who would benefit All or enjoy it above. okay All the above on my uh, website two cat studios retreats.com which um hopefully will we'll be able to give people a link. Um, I talk about the people who either are already an artist and just haven't either found a new way of expressing themselves or they uh, have taken a break from doing their art and aren't sure how to get back into it, or people who feel like they lost their creative self at age eight in, you know, second, third grade, when their art teacher told them they couldn't draw and you shouldn't draw a, a tree purple or you can't make a cow blue and so on. And so we had a good mixture in this group. We, there was a group of eight women and um, two of us are professional artists and the rest just enjoy allowing their inner child to paint and play with yarn and make a soul collage card. So it's for everybody. Yeah. Oh, it looked like so much fun. And as you mentioned, some of the ladies work full time doing something else, probably besides being artists, and they took their vacation and came here to your retreat. And I can't think of a more fun way to spend a week than to do all these fun art activities and express yourself. And of course, the added pleasure of being in the red rocks in this gorgeous oh. setting helps a lot too. Well, the setting definitely helped a lot. I do look for very uh, particular um, aspects when I'm looking for a retreat center. And so far I've found some really good places, but I have to say in the 10 years that I've been running retreats, Sedona Mago is now my absolute favorite. And I have already booked it for next May for another week of creative expression. Um, and I hope to make this an annual event because the grounds, the energy, um, just the people, the staff, everything about it was absolutely perfect for our group's needs. 
Oh, I'm so glad you're coming back next day. Maybe I can at least spend one day and play with you guys. That would be so much fun. I hope you will. Are the exact dates set yet? Of course, yes, because we set them with Jay. And I'll okay. tell you exactly when they are. Um, okay. Let's see. So it's going to be, um, it's actually going to be a Monday to a Sunday, mm -hmm. May 14th through 20th, 2018. 14 through the 20th. And that's really a beautiful time of year here. Before it gets too hot, that'll be really fun to see all the everything blooming and all the spring. That sounds great. So what have you heard from people after they've come to your retreats and they've gone back to their day-to-day -day lives, how this has changed them or helped them? Um, one of the... Um, I always do an evaluation form at the end of the retreats and uh, one woman sort of voiced, I think, what pretty much everyone was feeling, which was that it was just so refreshing to truly retreat. And by retreat, that means stepping away from your day-to-day -day life, your job, your family, your work, the to-do lists, all that stuff, and give yourself a break. And truly, um, that is what the group experienced for an entire week. One woman, um, we started on a Saturday and one woman on Sunday night, she said she started to get all anxious because Monday morning she had to be at work. And then she remembered that she didn't have to be at work. And she said she hardly almost, she hardly knew how to feel because it had been so long since she just gave herself that kind of a break. And um, I think some of, some of the other things were that inner critic got a lot of attention in terms of, yes, we all have that voice in our heads. I still have that voice in my head. I'm sure we all at, at times doubt our abilities and we doubt ourselves, but we don't need to kick ourselves about it. We can just move forward and learn from that experience. And so the the chair exercise where they put their inner critics in a chair and, and let them sit off to the side of the room, I think had a big impact as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. And that's where some of your, I suppose, art therapy background came together with your uh, creativity and, and artistry yourself. Is this something that you came up with? Because it's a really a cute idea and very helpful as well. I have to give credit to the um, Pacific Northwest Soul Collage Facilitator Group. Oh, we for that one. Uh-huh. The country, and they came up with the chair exercise, which I use in many of my workshops and retreats. Um, but my background as an art therapist definitely comes in handy um, because many times when people are on a retreat um, for a long time, which I think a week is a long time, um, their defenses have 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 lessened and they are more vulnerable mm -hmm. and they feel more deeply and they express more truly and sometimes that can be difficult for them to cope with and my training as an art therapist has helped me tremendously in you know easing somebody's anxiety or you know allowing them to express their true feelings in a safe space and what we created in our workroom was a beautiful sacred space with an altar and confidentiality, which is so important. Boy, it is. People need to feel safe, don't they? And I can see why Sedona Mago Retreat in particular is so good for this, because for those of you who haven't been here before, it is a beautiful place, beautiful grounds, but it is down a 30-minute forest service road. So once you get there, you're not likely to be running out to go shopping. We have our own shopping, but you know, you're, you're in this space and meals are provided. And so it does give you the time and space to go much deeper. Absolutely. Yeah. We did take a little field trip into uptown Sedona. I oh, wanted to yeah. uh, show everyone the art center because I am a member and I believe their, their mission is wonderful. And we went shopping and bought souvenirs and we were all so glad to get back. Aww. It was a dose of reality. And then yeah. it was like, take me back. Back to my safe womb here, yes. And I know you mentioned a minute ago that you made altars. How were those used when people take those altars back to their homes? So um, everyone made a little shrine to take home with shrine. them. Shrine. Mm -hmm. Cigar box. But the altar was in the center of the room with mm -hmm. um, elements the four directions and a candle and then people were invited to add things to the altar so that we had this beautiful visual in the center of our circle that really brought us back to a, a grounding sense of we're here on earth we have you know air water 
and uh, fire. We had their candle. Well, it wasn't a real candle. It was a battery operated candle. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was, it, it was a way to center ourselves every day. And we would gather around that twice a day um, and just process and talk about what people experienced oh. that day and what they learned and just yeah. anything they wanted to share. You know, oh, that's that, beautiful. Uh, and the collective vision too of the group, I'm sure then is, is honored. I guess what I misspoke I'm glad to hear about that. But what I was thinking of then were the little shrines that people brought back to their house with them. Could you explain about that project? Yes. So we used little cigar boxes that I got uh, online and um, they opened, they open, they usually open. <laughs> and everyone got to choose their own theme. So my theme was birds because I live in a beautiful place that, we have bird feeders and we, we see every kind of bird on their way to and from in their migration patterns. And Sedona Mago as well um, just had some incredible uh, birds. So each person prepared ahead of time if they wanted to make a shrine for a family member or a loved one or nature. And um, these are little reminders of things that are important to us. And so they're little portable shrines that people can take home and put on their own altar at home or put on a shelf and remind themselves of something that's very important in their life. They were uh, just beautiful. Someone made one for her, her three-year-old self. Um, it was happy birthday. She brought a little photograph of her, and her first cat and somebody else made a, a shrine in honor of the four directions and the animals associated and the trees. And then, you know, another woman did one for her aunt and uh, her mom. So they were a, a real variety. Um, it was the first time I had done that project with these cigar boxes. And I, everyone said that was one of their favorites during the week. Oh, that's very beautiful. So I just, before we close, I want to mention, in addition to doing these workshops for the general public, you also train people to be facilitators themselves so that they can hold these types of workshops. Is that correct? Yes, I train uh, facilitators in the process of soul collage, and I usually do two or three trainings a year. Actually, um, we have a team of about 15 trainers around the world. It's being translated into all kinds of languages, both uh, in Europe and, and elsewhere. And so if you go on soulcollage.com and look for uh, trainings, you'll see they're in Australia and, and Europe and uh, Portugal and South America and just all over the world. But I, my area that I tend to do is either here in Prescott um, and usually around Philadelphia, which is where I used to live. So um, you can find those trainings and becoming a facilitator. It's a, just a long weekend training, but mm -hmm. you learn how to work with groups and you learn how to fully explain and understand the process of creating the cards and using them for your own purposes. Um, and just the ethics involved and legalities of copyright and so on. Right. Everything you need to know. Well, gosh, Kat, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Before we go, I want to make sure that people can find you, find information on your retreats, write to you if they have any questions. So could you give your website once again? Sure. Um, I have two websites, um, but the Two Cat Studios is my main one, and it's the number two K-A-T and studios with an S dot com. I also have two cat studios retreats dot com. And that one shows you what we did on this retreat. If you're interested, it'll be similar for next year's retreat. Or you can email me at cat for clay at gmail dot com. It's K-A-T, the number four clay, as in what you sculpt with at gmail dot com. And I look forward to hearing from you, anybody. <laughs> right. And all the cat studios cat studios or tweets they're all spelled with a k so uh, yeah. don't forget that so thank, thank you. you so much i'm I was a thrilled to meet you and even more so to hear in depth of what you've been doing i really really appreciate what you're helping people with i'll see you again soon at mago thank you thank you cat bye now bye